G'day guys, Luke here. I just really wanna thank you for giving up your time and your energy to serve the wider community in this way. It just means a lot to be able to record these sermons so people who weren't able to attend the service or who are sick or just wanna review old messages can do exactly that online in a really easy and convenient way. So what I'm creating here is just a really easy to understand and follow instructional video for sermon filming that you can review as many times as you need to without any worries if you forget stuff or get rusty. So uh, if you're, by the way, not that great, or if you're making mistakes, I just gotta say up front, it doesn't really matter that much. As long as you are capturing the sermon, as long as it's all going relatively smoothly in general, it's, it's just enough that it's being caught on camera. It just means a lot. So uh, without further ado, here we go in uh, showing you how it's done. So first of all, I'm gonna run you through how this camera works and all of its features, functions, and what some who's it's, so there's no confusion. First up, you've got the LCD screen that folds out from the side. This also allows you to access the SD card slot, and it's also a touch screen, but I don't think you'll use the touch screen functionality, so don't worry about that part. Next up, you've got the lens cover, which is important to remember to flip open, otherwise you will be greeted with nothing but darkness, and you'll probably panic, so remember to open that one up. Next, we've got the SD card slot uh, on the side where the LCD panel opens up, and you just need to slide it up with your finger, and the SD cards slide in, and just with a little click will go in place. Just make sure you've got it the right way around, as shown here. We've got the on-off switch up here, which when the tripod is extended to full height, you might not actually be able to see. So if you look here, sliding it to the middle is what will turn it on, and then sliding it back turns it off again. And this little handy feature is the zoom rocker. It's basically what allows you to zoom in and out, but the more pressure you apply, the faster or, and more abruptly it will zoom in and out. So if you're in a hurry, you can press it all the way down. If you're kind of recording and you want to be subtle, you can apply very subtle pressure. What I like to do is I like to kind of brace my finger against the side of the camera like this and very gently lean down on it, and that tends to produce the smoothest results. Now, in terms of focusing and white balance, you don't have to worry about that. I've already set up the camera so it will auto-focus, auto-white balance, and it's already exposed to be ideal for when the sermons are happening on stage. All you've got to do is make sure the camera is pointed at the right spot. Now lastly, you've got to know where the charging port is. This is essential because you'll be using it after every service. Basically, you just fold up this little side cover it and open it up and the black one, not the yellow one, the black one is where you charge in your charging cable. So uh, we'll go over just in a moment exactly how you're gonna use that. Now the tripod is really easy to operate. Basically, the first thing you do when you bring it downstairs is that you extend the legs fully. Now when you do this, you might notice that, oh my goodness, this is pretty darn high up. But that's okay. You can just simply adjust it to the level that suits your height. You attach the camera to the tripod by loosening the screw on the side and applying pressure down. This basically folds back a little latch that allows the camera to neatly slide in the top. Now let's just say you've got the camera tripod just to your right height. You might notice this little bubble here on the tripod head. That basically tells you whether or not it's balanced. You'll notice if the little bubble isn't kind of in the center of that circle, then you're gonna have to just adjust the length of each leg until you've got it nice and centered. That's really important to making sure the sermon speaker doesn't look like he's in one of those comedically tilted rooms. And to adjust the arm, just loosen that side screw and then place the tripod arm and rotate it to be kind of comfortable for you to use in a sitting position on the stool. Now you might notice that there are a few knobs and dials on the tripod itself, and you might be wondering what they do. Well, I'm here to tell you. First up, we have the knob on the side of the camera. This locks or loosens the vertical pan. So if you're dealing with a speaker who's taller than you expected or shorter, you can adjust the height of the shot to match their height. And I've just realized that none of the other knobs matter because you won't be using them. And I've even removed one entirely. So let's just move on to the next bit. 
oh, uh, but before we move on, uh, just keep in mind that this tripod has a weird little hiccup where you might be panning side to side and suddenly you're gonna find it gets super loose and wobbly and you're like, what the heck is going on? Well, it's just a bug. Just keep rotating it right until it tightens and then very gently move it back to where you want it, want again. Or just rotate it all the way around back to its original position. Uh, just, eh, technology. The first stage is to go upstairs, unplug the camera from the wall and bring it downstairs into the main hall. Go to the appropriate position for the morning service or the evening service and set up the tripod at full height, then lower it to the right height and balance it out. Grab a fresh SD card from inside the camera bag and place it into the SD card slot on the camera and close the hatch. It's important to do this before you turn on the camera. Then all that's left is to open the lens cover, open the screen, and turn on the camera. Make sure it's all working fine before things really get rolling so you're not having any unpleasant surprises once the actual sermon begins. Always make sure you turn on the camera with time to spare. This way you're not caught fumbling about when the speaker steps up on stage and also as an extra precaution, make sure you're recording before the speaker actually steps up onto the stage. This is kind of important because it gives the editor space on either the front and the back end of the sermon to kind of cut it down. Now, this part's really important. There's always this period at the start of every sermon where the speaker steps up onto the stage and are taking a second to kind of collect themselves. This is your key opportunity to frame them correctly. Usually factor in that if they're collecting their notes, they're going to be hunched over slightly, so it's going to look a little bit inaccurate. So when they suddenly stand up straight, you want to make sure there's enough space above their head where it's not an unpleasant surprise when they stand up straight and their top half of their head is cut off. The ideal framing for most speakers is to leave a little bit of a gap above the head and a little bit of a gap below the belt. This is kind of pretty ideal as it feels close and intimate, but it gives you enough space if the speaker's going left and right. The only exception to this rule, if need be, is Stuart because he's a flopping maniac who darts all over the stage with no warning. Fortunately, that's cool. If you need to, you can zoom so it's just a little bit above the head and a little bit below the knees. That should give you a little more wiggle room for when the speaker's going left and right, quickly without any real warning. Now, a general rule of thumb when you're filming a speaker is to always make sure that you treat it like driving a car. When you've got a lot of passengers in your car, you don't really want to be jerking and accelerating and braking suddenly. It's really jarring and kind of stops anyone in the car really being able to relax or have a conversation. In the same way, you want to be focusing on what the speaker's saying. So when you're panning left and right, and if you need to adjust your zoom or adjust your up and down pan, it's important to have really gentle, subtle, ease in, ease out movements. So it's not really evident to the viewer that the camera's even moving. They're not really focusing on that. They're focusing on what the speaker's saying. So the general rule of thumb is avoid sudden, abrupt, distracting movements. When filming your speaker, really try to make sure you're keeping them in the center third, where you can see the grid in the camera screen. Keeping them in the center third will be beneficial in editing when we're adding in power points and we want to kind of crop it in a little bit. So that way the speaker kind of is clearly in shot even if we've cropped out the left and right sections. It's okay if they wander out of it occasionally, you know, it'll happen all the time. But as long as you do your best, that's all we're really asking. Another good tip is that when speakers move left and right, they usually telegraph that they're about to move. They'll do this thing where they'll lean back on one foot and then step into where they're gonna go next. If you, some are more subtle than others, but if you generally know what to look for, you can kind of tell when a speaker's about to move so you can move smoothly with them. It doesn't have to be this, oh, crikey, they're moving. You know, it can be something really organic and you can then kind of follow their general flow, again, avoiding abrupt, distracting movements. Also, there's this weird general rule of kinetics where if you move the camera left and right when the speaker's not moving, it's super distracting. Uh, who knows why? It's just a human psychology thing. 
So the general rule of thumb here is that when you do move the camera, try to synchronize it with the speaker moving in some way. Even if it's a subtle adjustment of the shoulders or just, you know, a little shift of weight or something or a big sweep of the arms, try to match the speaker's movements when you move the camera so the viewer is not really thinking about the camera's movement. Now, the hardest thing about this job is arm fatigue. When you're filming someone for half an hour or more, your arm tends to get pretty tired when you're moving that tripod left and right. So the key here is to find an arm position that makes sense and will allow you to hold it in place for extended periods. A great one that I've discovered is by placing one arm underneath the other and supporting your elbow and then kind of resting your fingers casually on the end of the tripod arm and just so that way you're not actually applying any pressure on the tripod arm and you don't get tired. You can kind of sit like this. If you've got the tripod at the right height, it's honestly the best way to do it and you won't get any arm fatigue. Once the service is done, all you gotta do is put the camera right back where you found it and by plugging it into the wall using that black charging port, not the yellow one, the black one. Once that's gone exactly where it should, be sure to take out the SD card, put it inside a case that you'll find inside the camera bag and give it to either myself or Matthew Boutros, pictured here. And if you can't find either of us, that's fine. Just place the SD card in the collection bag and I'll pick it up at another time, no worries. And make sure the camera is flopping charging. If you don't see a red light on the camera, it's not charging. Look for that red light because we've had that happen a couple of times where the camera was not charging and it was really scary the next Sunday. And that's it. That is the entirety of it. Now I may have rambled, but frankly, I'm just doing this video out of the goodness of my heart. So I'm tired and I can't be bothered doing multiple takes. So I hope this made some kind of coherent sense. Feel free to go back and watch segments if you want any more clarity. But thank you so much for offering your skills and your services. It, it just really means a lot. And I really look forward to working with you. God bless, guys. And uh, don't, don't break any of the equipment. Don't.